Tom Appel, Consumer Guide Automotive, is, uh, well, he's a car genius is what he is. Mm-hmm. He's also a fine texter, a mm-hmm. terrific mm-hmm. Uh, contributor to the question of the day answers. <laughs> so what's the best or worst Valentine's Day gift you ever got or received, huh? The best or worst Valentine's? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea. I got a car one for you. Um, you guys remember okay. and know uh, Ana DeVlantis. Sure. Our friend Ana DeVlantis, yes. longtime Chicago TV star. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, we were doing the auto show, uh, live broadcast there. And when I did the afternoon show in town across the street before they turned it into a car wash, um, I was at the auto show for the full two weeks and she'd be a regular guest. And she came by and the guy she was dating at that point, I had not met. And I just flippantly said, well, what did Mr. Romance get you? <laughs> and, uh, he got her, he got her wiper blades. Nice. Well, maybe she needed some wiper blades. He didn't put them on or he didn't have them put on. He just handed her uh, wiper blades. Uh, and, of course, I helped. I said, well, I can't believe this won't last. <laughs> Did it last? Is no, it the guy she's not. married to? No, of course not. Okay. <laughs> um, so wiper blades. We cannot recommend wiper blades. Not auto show guess. is coming up. The auto show in Detroit's huge. Auto show here is huge. And we were talking to those folks, Tom. This is the first year it's really back um, since the pandemic. Right. Yeah, February 10th through 19th, it's back. It fills the entire North Hall, or South Hall, I'm sorry. Uh, but it should be fabulous. And, and are you a fan of people, you know, walking a show? Um, I guess shop the show, buy the car, is that the, is that the phrase? It is. It's, it, the nice thing about the auto show is right, you can't even buy a car at the auto show if you wanted to. So it's a completely no-pressure event. So if you're looking for a car, bring your wife, bring your kids, or bring your husband and bring your kids uh, and walk around the show. And, and, you know, get into the car. That's the nice thing. You can get into cars back to back to back and really check them out. And there's no hurry. There's no rush. And it's fun. And usually it smells good because the pralines are going in the corner. So it's, it's a good day. <laughs> it really is fun. I went last year for the first time ever, which I That's can't. That's amazing. I know it. Yeah. But it was fun to sit in the cars and get an idea of what's out there, what's new, what's coming. I, I noticed that a lot of the makers weren't there. Some of the makers I was looking for didn't have a booth. They didn't have a setup. And I was surprised by that. Why do they not always come? Just because of budget? Interesting story there. It, it's just because it's been an awkward kick-up since, since uh, COVID. And, and like this year, famously, Stellantis isn't going to be at the auto show. And it seems like a big deal. But this is a very awkward year for Stellantis. They're, they're in, in very weird places in terms of uh, product introduction, their product introduction cadence. And they just don't have a lot to show. And it is very expensive to hit the auto show t- uh, cycle, not just to pay for your space, but to bring people, to bring your stuff, and to set that stuff up. And, and so automakers are increasingly deciding to skip auto shows where they used to be sort of required to be there. Yeah, and, and it's a big deal for the dealers um, to be there. It's sort of a, a convention without a name, I suppose, but they interact yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. And um, I am a believer in doing it. I had to get a car a couple of weeks ago, and I got a Buick Envision of an air from my pal Woody at Woody Buick, and I love it. There's some just there's, there's great cars, great American cars. I'm a GM guy. Nick's a Ford guy. We fight in the hallway. Yep. <laughs> and um, there, But there's great stuff out there, and the dealers are getting inventory again. They are getting inventory, and that's the nice part. Uh, some research that came up this week from different sources suggests that, that new car prices are finally starting to fall. They've been very sticky. As we know, during COVID, they got really high. The average new car price uh, got very close to $50,000. It slid back down to about $48,000. It's not going to come down that far because manufacturers are still not building exactly as many cars as we need, so they're kind of building a, a higher balance of more expensive vehicles, unfortunately. So if you're looking for a car, you may not find low-end stuff, but there's a good selection of the other stuff. So you mentioned Stellantis. Mm-hmm. Stellantis, uh, I think, started with a, a Fiat merger, if I remember right. But anyway, Peugeot, Chrysler, amongst the products they do. Yeah. And what are they doing with AI if they're short on money? You know, that's a great story about AI. Uh, they, they, just, they just looked into a company called CloudMade, and we're going to see a lot of manufacturers doing this in the near future, as we move towards autonomous vehicles, or vehicles even with autonomous features, and over-the-air updates, often referred to as OTA, we're we're getting closer to something called the software-defined vehicle. And it's where software is as important, if not more important, than the hardware on the vehicle. And it's more about what defines that vehicle in terms of how we interpret it. Uh, uh, but, But 
the problem is the software is getting more and more difficult to develop, and it's getting very expensive. People who follow the business news closely know that Volkswagen got into trouble with a new division called Caria that was supposed to be developing its EV technology and has failed. So Volkswagen is actually looking to buy a software platform off the shelf from another company. And, and this is what Stellantis is hoping to avoid. They're actually buying a new company that they hope will be their, their EV technology division. It's fascinating, too, because we AI, we talk more and more about it. It's now taking over cars. Stellantis probably will have a lot of cars to show next year at the auto show if they're not going to be there this year because they're uh, low on cars to show. But ever since I saw the movie Leave the World Behind with Julia Roberts and the scene with the Teslas, I am not surprised to hear that Tesla is recalling cars for certain issues. What is it this time? Well, I mean, they all died in Oak Brook. <laughs> <laughs> yes, with the batteries. Yeah, with the cold. Yeah, Tesla issues a lot of recalls. And the funny thing about Tesla is that the, the recalls should scare people, but they handle them using over the, this is topical, over the air updates. And for the most part, you're not required to bring your Tesla anywhere. They will handle the software update and they will update your car when your car isn't running and you won't even know about it, though they are required to let you know that they have done an update. And in the case of the update now, which has something to do with backup cameras, they have already issued the update, but the announcement doesn't come out till March, which is seems backwards. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. And do they, they, do they let their consumers know ahead of time, or they just it happens and then they tell them in March? Robot shows up in your garage. Yeah. <laughs> with a little toolkit. <laughs> yeah, no privacy at all. I think, I think the way this generally works is that you get into your car, and whether or not you've gotten a formal paper announcement in an envelope in the mail, there will be something on your screen letting you know that an, uh, an update has taken place. I don't know how much detail is in that update, however. So this plug-in overnight thing, it's more than just for your battery. Uh, it is, although the, the, the update itself actually doesn't come through anything you've plugged into. That's literally over there like a, like a cell call to your car. And what about this autopilot on the Tesla? I guess drivers are getting angry because now it's not autopilot. They actually have to pay attention. Yeah, there's two systems. One is called autopilot, and then the more advanced system is called FSD, full self-driving, which is also inaccurately named because it is not full self-driving. <laughs> uh, but both of those systems are extra cost when you buy them, and then the cost money each month to to operate them. Uh, and, and I guess they're relatively good at doing what they do, but they're wildly understood to do more than they actually do. And they work very much like General Motors Super Cruise or Ford's Blue Cruise, where they're best applied on the highway in safe situations when the car kicks in. And you can take your hands off the wheel, but you are supposed to pay attention. Uh, so, yeah, and there are people who do things like sleep while their car is in oh, that come mode. On. That's a very bad idea. Yeah, you no, think so? Come on. Mm. Hey, before you go, <clears throat> I, I keep hearing less and less talk about EVs and the EV push that we had before. I know we can't take this out of the political argument category, but this may be more than a generation away based on trending. And again, until we produce electricity without fossil fuels, maybe the argument's a moot point anyway. But between the Tesla problem and the lack of interest in it, it's kind of a tough way for GM and Ford and others to back out of the big push, isn't it? Yeah, and we've reached an interesting inflection point, too, and I think a lot of people predicted this, where people who can afford EVs easily generally have standalone homes and can charge at home and aren't as affected by the EV infrastructure. So it's easy for some folks to own these, but we're reaching a point, too, where EV interest to keep EV sales growing has to extend to people who live in apartments, live in cities, things like that, where it's a little more difficult to keep EVs on the road. Last year, 8% of all vehicles sold in the U.S. were electric. The prediction for this year is 10%. So while 25% sounds like a big, big amount of you know, interest growth, it's not as big as people were hoping. Yeah, so go buy your gas-powered car, be a decent citizen, service it, take care of it. And uh, no, someday we'll talk about electric, but it's not coming anytime soon in my world that I can say. Yeah, it's coming slow, and I and I think that interest is has slowed down for a lot of practical reasons. Charging is bad; they are expensive, and there have been some famous issues too, right? We we know that Chevrolet had to stop sale of the uh, the Chevrolet Blazer because of software issues. Right, exactly. Um, you're great, Tom. You know that. We you're great, to Tom. You. Uh, Tom's all over social media. How do we follow you? Where are you? I am Car Guy Tom on Twitter. Car Guy Tom, Twitter X. How about a website? Any website you want to plug? Yeah, if people want to go to my website, that's better because I can make money that way. That's Good. consumerguide.com.
Nice. Imagine how early he had to be in on the internets, all of them, to get consumerguide.com. You know what I'm saying? Real early. Yeah. Like, like real, real. Like, like People the, were saying, like, like what's a go, 50s. daddy? Yeah. So, uh, Tom, Stone thank you, man. Even. We always love having you on. Always a pleasure. Thank you, guys. There you go. Tom Appel. He's a good dude. Great he knows dude. stuff. He knows lots of stuff. He knows stuff. Anything, really. Uh, Nick and I will continue to have our Ford GM fight.